Hi guys, it's Chris at Court and Crown back with another cider to try. And it's the last one that we got as a sample from David at um, Bushel and Peck. And it's another 750ml, large format, which is very exciting. Uh, first one we did that was a big format was uh, Dabonet. Then we did the side-by-side -side tasting of the crisp and fresh. Fresh and crisp, was it called? And uh, the other one, rich and round or something, I forget. But um, yeah, that was really good. Interesting to compare them back to back. And now we have this one. Coining. Coining. What is coining? Well, it turns out coining is, do you know, at the corner buildings, you have big bricks that interlock like this. Certainly at older buildings, Victorian buildings, Georgian buildings, things like that. Um, you see these big bricks in the corner that interlock. That's coining. There you go. So I had to look that up. I have no idea. So this is um, Cambridge Coining and Friends Gloucestershire Hereford Apple. So I don't know if it's because they've got lots of different things in there. Lots of different apples, which are giving you this sort of building up to give you this flavour profile. Who knows? One thing I do know is quite light in colour. So if you'd watched the film from yesterday, you know that that makes me think straight away that this is going to be from dessert apples um, and culinary apples and cooking apples rather than cider apples because cider apples tend to give you a darker colour, somewhat like that. It, pretend you didn't see that for something else. Um, so yeah, here we go. Coining, bushel and peck. Did, 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 anything else on here? 7% ABV. Uh, ingredients, 100% apple juice from freshly pressed, unspread apples. That's it. Right, it's got a nice little bow around it. Let's open it. Let's open it. And try it, shall we? Yes, please, Chris. Okay. Pop. Oh. So a bit of fizz. As you can see, oh, no. yeah, it's a little bit of, I don't know if you can see it. There are a few bubbles coming up there. Let's pour it out and check it out. Oh, you can smell it already. Smell it already. Yep. So you can see, nice big moosey head on that. Loads of bubbles in this. This will be, uh, this will be pet nat, because his stuff is pet nat, which we like. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Is there a date on it? Is there a date on it? Is there a date on it? There is a date on it. 2019 batch 16 bottle number 34 so this is quite limited stuff for sure well, that looks like a sparkling wine to me looks like a you know champagne or a cremant something like that hazy uh, pale gold almost lemon water pale gold that let's have a sniff see what we think oh god so physio today my arm is flipping killing me it knacks as they would say on tea side and um but it's all for a good cause. So let's smell this, shall we? Hint of funkiness in there. Interesting notes. Yeah, kind of a buttery character. Almost like a diacetyl kind of character, I want to say. Um, which is butteriness. So the butteriness you get is a chardonnay. People talk about buttery chardonnay. Diacetyl is what gives you that butteriness. If you ever get butteriness in any beer, wine, whatever, probably diacetyl. That's, that you're smelling and then okay I can't quite yeah it's a round rich creaminess to it and there's some freshness underneath I'm not sure that it smells necessarily of apple obviously I mean I almost say this is a peri just by the colour and the nose but um a bit of sort of sulfurous funk over the top which I don't mind it makes you think of dino uh, dinosaurs it makes you think of dinosaurs Volcanoes is what I meant to say. So my kids were watching a program earlier with dinosaurs and volcanoes. I'm very easily swayed. Makes me think of dinosaurs, the smell. Yeah. Interesting. Really interesting note. Let's try it. Okay. Very little tannin. So makes me think this is, in fact, culinary dessert, crab, whatever, apples. Not cider apples. Hence this light colour, which comes from the lack of tannin. Tannin, what reacts with oxygen and gives you that dark colour you see in um, cider, side varietals, which are higher in tannin. Um, yeah, greener, fresher, lighter, almost more apple-y, almost grapefruity. I want to say, so I'll say it, grapefruity. Dry, mineral, 
it's actually quite pleasant. It's quite light, but there's something pleasant about it. I don't feel like I'm being shortchanged. It means it doesn't have the richness of the dabbing that they had, which is super rich. This is the other end of the spectrum. Um, light, there's almost like a, a pithiness to it. There's like a bitterness in there, but not, not in a nasty way. Almost like you get a pithiness from like a, a lemon skin or an orange skin or whatever, um, which I kind of like. It adds a layer to it. And it's not like a leatheriness, like a, a hard tanny leatheriness. It does feel to me like a fruit thing, like a like a pith sort of character. Um, see, this doesn't taste... See, if you watch the last film where we had, uh, I, said, I called it like East Coast versus, East Country versus West Country. So dessert culinary versus sort of cider apples. Okay. My preference tends to be for cider. But I actually said that the bushel and peck from David that we had with it, that was culinary and dessert apples, was actually one of the best examples I'd had of it. It actually had some characters and riches. I actually, I actually kind of liked it. First time that's happened, really, that I can think of. This, again, really... I, should, I, I feel like I should be lumping it in. Even though the, the apples are from Gloucestershire, I feel like they're not cider apples. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're not. So I feel like I should be getting the characteristics that I don't usually like in these sorts of ciders. However, I actually do quite like it. It's got an apple kind. It's not like a grapefruit sort of thing and a pittiness to it. Um, really nice bubbles, light, refreshing. It's dry as well. So there's no, so it's not like, there's no cloying element to it, which is something else I tend to find in... East Coast ciders, if they've got sugar in them, I tend to, I don't know, I just find them out of whack. I, I struggle with them a bit. But this, is actually pretty good. I mean, look, necked it. That tells you something, doesn't it? That tells you something. So this is really interesting. I'd like to know more about it. I'd like to know what the heritage apples are that have gone into this. Um, doesn't say on the label particularly. Hopefully David will watch this and then tell me. And then I can tell you. Because I think it's, it's it's a really fascinating drink. And I have to say, I'm going back for more. It's it's very different to the Dabonet. I feel like I can drink a lot more of this than the Dabonet. It's refreshing, but you know what? It's, it's, it's good. This is a good cider. This is a good cider. Wow. I'm pleased about that. Because when I opened the bottle, I was anxious. I was like, oh, is it going to be like... You know, a bit too malic, a bit too acid, a bit too, you know, reminiscent of the things that put me off cider, commercial ciders, which tend to be made with dessert apples, culinary apples, etc. But it's not. And I had a similar reaction to the, the fresh, crisp and fresh, or the fresh and crisp, whatever it happened to be called in the last film. Good stuff. So David has opened my eyes to, let's call them East Country, as opposed to West Country ciders, if that makes sense. All right, guys. Pleasant surprise. Right, well, thank you for joining me as always. Uh, I do hope you'll join me again. But until then, cheers.